We're all pretty familiar with the moon. It's big, round, and affects the Earth in many ways, including the tides. While there's still debate about its origins, there is no doubting the fact that it's fascinated mankind for millennia. After astronauts visited the moon in 1969 and throughout the 70s, we learned a lot more about it. It's indeed beautiful and picturesque, but it's also cold and unforgiving. It has no atmosphere, and it possesses a fraction of Earth's gravitational pull. In short, it's not a particularly hospitable place to live. But what if we terraformed the moon? Would it even be possible? In this video, we're going to take a closer look at exactly what this would entail. Firstly, let's explain what terraforming is. The basic definition is to transform a planet, moon, or other body similar to the environment of Earth so that it can support human life. But the question is, how do you go about doing this? To terraform the moon, there would be a few important things to consider. Firstly, the temperature. The temperature of the moon ranges greatly from day to night. Because it doesn't have an atmosphere, the moon cannot trap and retain heat, nor can it insulate to keep heat out. This being the case, it fluctuates wildly depending on solar radiation. It can reach up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit in direct sunlight. In the coldest spots outside of sunlight, it drops to minus 243 Fahrenheit. So for humans to live on the moon, they would have to figure out a way to insulate its surface. The easiest way to do that is with an atmosphere. To create an atmosphere, we'd need to rain 100 water ice comets onto the moon's surface. These would essentially be asteroids made of ice or asteroids, if you will. They would fill the moon's plains with water, and with that, disperse carbon dioxide along with water vapor as well as of ammonia and methane. This cocktail would then be able to give the moon its atmosphere, and with that, the first step to making it more Earth-like. The newly formed oceans would reflect sunlight and make the moon appear five times brighter than it is today. Although this might seem like a difficult undertaking, and it is, it's a lot easier than terraforming a planet that's hundreds of millions of miles away like Mars. Because we're a comparatively short distance away from the moon, 384,000 kilometers away, we could transport resources quicker and easier to our orbiting body. So if we were going to terraform anything, it'd be the moon to start with. Once we had an atmosphere in place, the challenge would then be to keep it there. The Earth has a magnetic field which makes sure that our atmosphere isn't stripped by solar winds. This field exists because of the makeup of the Earth's core. Mars used to have a similar field but was disrupted, it thought because of asteroid collisions on the planet. But this explains why Earth has thriving life and that Mars, in contrast, is barren. If we were to put a huge amount of effort into getting an atmosphere in place on the moon, it would be a disaster if it were then stripped by solar winds. So what would our options be to avoid this? The first would be to duplicate the effect that keeps Earth's magnetic field in place which is known as the dynamo effect. The dynamo theory describes the process through which a rotating, convecting, and electrically conducting fluid can maintain a magnetic field over astronomical timescales. This would rely on the rotation of the moon, just how the Earth's rotation is essential to maintaining our magnetic field. The good news here is that firing a load of asteroids that we mentioned earlier would help with this. We would increase the rotation of the moon and a lunar day would drop from a relatively slow 28 Earth days to a much speedier 60 hours. Even if this method didn't work to keep the field in place, there's still a plan B. We would have to form a giant artificial shield around the moon. It would act as an artificial bow shock and could effectively replace the need for a magnetic field. Admittedly, this is a lot more work than generating a natural magnetic field, but could in theory be done and may have to be done if we weren't able to get the factors in place to be able to balance the dynamo effect. Assuming there was an atmosphere and shield to protect from solar winds in place, then the next step would be to populate the moon with organisms which would help to sustain life on the rock. Genetically engineered plants would need to be delivered that could live on the moon's harsh, rocky surface. On top of this, there would also need to be algae that would release oxygen into the air. With these things in place, then a breathable atmosphere may well be possible. Plant life would need to be developed first, and over many decades, human life could slowly be phased to join them. Life on this new moon would be pretty interesting. For one, gravity would be a lot different to that on Earth, about one-sixth of our planet. Because of this, you'd be able to jump 3 meters or 10 feet in the air. The climate would be a lot like you'd experience in Florida in that it would be warm, 
cloudy and humid due to greenhouse gases. Tides would be huge due to Earth's gravitational dominance over its smaller counterpart. Expect to see huge 20-yard waves and also with less gravitational pull, you'd also be able to board over long distances without too much effort at all. So in summary, if we were to terraform the moon, it would become a surfer's paradise. So this is what would happen if we terraformed the moon. Expect to see ice comets raining down on our lunar orbiter, followed by either a natural magnetic field being developed or maybe even an artificial one. Green life would then top off the huge space project, leaving us with a breathable atmosphere that could be tested out by plants before us humans had a go on our new trampoline-like home. Do you think we should terraform the moon? Would you move to the moon if we had the opportunity? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.